praise God. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done and everything you're going to do, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. Thank you, Jesus, for the myriad of miracles. Thank you, Jesus, this building's paid off. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Mr. Jason, right here, sir. Hallelujah. A couple weeks ago, remember I was out here with that wood chipper? I kept on hearing my spirit about your little boy. And uh, I thought about your little boy for three hours. I heard in my spirit, straighten up, straighten up. And Pastor Jay was talking about what you, that flash in your spirit. I've seen it. What you need to do. When, uh, when you're with your little boy, I want you to say to him, honey, straighten up. Straighten up. At nighttime, when he goes to bed, you go in there and you say it with grit. You know what I'm saying? You speak to that. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command that eyes to straighten up. I command those legs straighten up. You say it with grit. Then I saw that you get him and you say, Tyson, straighten up, honey. Tell him to tell himself that. You understand me? Yeah. To learn how to say, straighten up, Tyson. He's going to say it to himself. You understand me? When you're sitting there on the couch next to that boy, you're going to say, honey, straighten up. You're going to say it with a sweet tone so he don't think you're mad at him. You understand me? And you keep on saying that. You understand me? I love you, sir. He, that young man ain't, ain't going to be like radio. Yeah. He ain't. He won't. You understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. She to my. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, well, the word is good. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, y'all have a seat. Let's jump in the word here. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, the Lord had me uh, kind of lean a certain direction. I want to talk about uh, faith this morning. Yeah. Well, how many of you know uh, faith works through love? Yeah. Most people don't, uh, they don't put two and two together. They try to just build a foundation of faith, but they don't have a foundation of love. They try to build their, their faith but they, they don't work their love. Faith works through love, amen? amen? Lord's been dealing with me about this for about a year. That he's been dealing me, with me about love and to kind of just prepare myself for it. I remember every Christian is given a measure of the God kind of faith when they're born again. I was sitting right here a couple weeks ago, or no, it was a couple months ago, and... Uh, I heard in my spirit, and I knew what he meant by it. He said, to have the God kind of faith, you have to have the God kind of love. I'm talking about the faith that put the stars in the sky. I'm talking about the mountain moving faith. I'm not talking about just pay your bills faith. You understand what I'm saying? And it really just hit home for me. I said, Lord, I see what you're saying that, about that, about having love has to, you have to build on love. And people just try to build their faith, but they, but they want to be, what was I thinking of? Is it, well, they want to be the grim, reaper, the grim reaper or the gossipers. There's, but there's no such department in heaven, last time I checked. But, God's think, but they think God put them there to tell everyone what someone did or something. And they can't build anything, amen? I was in the back here and I got these trees, and they're about yay skinny. And they got this huge thing on top. And every couple weeks, they go, come plump. They fall over. <laughs> come plump. They just fall over. Well, that tree is trying to outgrow itself. You know what I'm talking about, Pastor Johnny? And so I have to tie it up. 
But that's what some people are trying to do. They're trying to go real high, but they can't because the bass ain't ready for it. Amen? I remember, uh, you got to have a good foundation. Off point here. This is just coming in my spirit. I was watching, a, uh, watching Netflix, and I was watching something about uh, Egyptians, how they haul them big rocks. I mean, they were saying, they don't even know how they move these big rocks. It's not even possible yeah. to move these rocks. They said, you can't even get enough men around it to move it. Right. And they said, uh, and then in my mind, I said, uh, you know, because I was watching it, and I, I said this about, uh, you, you, you know, God, uh, and this is going to help somebody. Uh, and I said to myself, man, I wonder if all this is even real. Like, how are they even, you know, about, about Lord and j- just, you know, my mind just kind of, Went there, and I heard in my spirit, and it happened with over like three seconds, so I may be saying a little longer. But he said, uh, how you know the president's real? You ever seen him? I said, well, no, I actually haven't seen him in person. Huh? And, and then I heard in my spirit, uh-huh. And I said, yes, Lord. And then he said, how you know the president's real? You ever seen him? No, I ain't. Actually, I never have in person. But we know he's real. Right? And I was like, okay, Lord, thank you. I take correction. You know, but uh, that, that was for somebody. I thought it was pretty good. Good. I thought, well, that's a pretty good analogy right there. You ever seen the president? No, I ain't, never, I ain't never seen George W. Bush. I ain't never seen the president in my life. In person. You ever, you, you ever seen the president? How you know he exists? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. I was up in um, Colorado. And uh, I had a, uh, uh, I had a truck up there, and uh, w- one morning it's nine degrees. It's cold. Pastor New York here. I'm sure that ain't nothing for you, huh? That's, that, <laughs> yeah, minus six. But boy, I, I, uh, I got in that truck, and uh, I was gonna go to town. I'm gonna go, go get me a coffee. I'm gonna go down to Sonic. I'm going to go down to Murdoch's, give them women a hard time down at the Murdoch's. <laughs> and uh, I jumped in that truck and went up to the gate, and I went through the gate, closed the gate, and I'm going down the hill, and I'm just having myself a good time listening to country music, just enjoying my day. And uh, I'm like, hey, this steering wheel has gotten tight. What's going on? I looked at the RPMs, the engine shut off. Hey, look out. <laughs> well, the good thing is I'm, I'm the best driver I know. So I was, I was on snow, and you know, ch- engine shuts off, power brake's gone, power steering's gone, all that's gone. And I'm like, you, you know, I, I don't want to hit the brakes too hard and smash them and skid out. I said, hey, so I kind of just barely did it, and I'm moving that thing, put it in neutral. I said, hey, what's going on here? And uh, I was, uh, I stopped, put it in park, and started it, and I had to kind of hold the gas for a minute, kind of get her going. Well, I had to drive to town with both feet on each pedal. Just kind of keep her revved up a little bit. But what in the world is going on? I ain't got time for this crap. It's cold outside. My fingers are cold, man. I don't want to deal with this junk. I'm here for Christmas. And uh, I got downtown. There ain't no mechanic stores open. So I went down to Sonic and got me a sandwich and a, and a coffee. And, uh, well, I, I had to pull in the parking space and because my truck wasn't running right. And uh, I went over there. Uh, finally, I went down to AutoZone, and they said, well, put that scanner in it. And they said, boy, it could be a bunch of things. Well, I know that. That's why I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> and they said, uh, well, there's a little sensor in there that reads air. It's probably broke. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is broke. I don't know. I, I don't know what's wrong with it. You know, the, these new cars, about eight different little sensors. If one goes out, the whole thing is just shut down. And I, I went out that truck, and I was looking at it, and I saw a piece of a, a vacuum line. You, most men know what a vacuum line is. And I, I brought a sample of one, kind of what it looked like. It's about yay big. It's about that big. It's just a connection. Y'all, y'all see that? Billy knows about them. And it just connects to the carburetor, and it went to something else. And it looked pretty good. And I was like, well, it's got a little crack in it. Well, I don't know that. I don't know if that's it. Well, I went over to the Napa store and I said, uh, "Hey, I need vacuum hose." I said, "What size?" I said, "It looked like this." And I took that one off. 
a piece from another, loca another location, and I went, uh, then I came back, and he said, yeah, I'll just give it to you. You just take it. You know, it's, it's only an inch and a half. He said, just take it. And I said, well, this part that I need, uh, you know, that reads air and fuel mixture, you got that? He said, no, I ain't got it. He says about $85. I said, well, I don't want, I didn't want to pay $85 and have it ordered. I said, because I don't know what it is. He said, you do, did you do that computer thing? I said, yeah, but it, it says it's not, it's just not, mixture's not right. He said, uh, so I, I went down to the, the O'Reilly's, and uh, I, I went down there, and he, uh, there's a lady down there at O'Reilly's. I tried not to talk to her, because most women don't know about car parts, so I tried to avoid her, <laughs> but she got me. She pulled me in. She pulled me in, said, uh, said, yeah, I got the parts, $105, but it's a universal one. It'll fit multiple things. I said, well, I don't know if I want to mess with it. I said, well, I'm just going to take it back to the house. I don't care. I'll just put it in the garage and leave it, and I'll figure it out later. And I got back home. I said, uh, well, I got that little vacuum hose. I'm going to go put it on there and see what happens. And, boy, I put it, I put it on there, and uh, I, I said, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm just going to gun it all the way out. I'm going to put it on, fire it up. And it idled, but you put some, some foot in it, and then it shut down. And, boy, I, I put her in four-wheel drive and just headed straight through the snow, just plowing, and laid off real quick. I wanted to see. And sure enough, that little hole is about yay big. Could I go back to the first? Just because that little hose was messed up, it could have made me crash if I didn't know what I was doing. And most people are looking for a big problem. When it's something yay big, and the Lord showed me, he said, most people are looking for something big like you was doing when it was really just a small piece, and they ain't walking in love. And they're looking, well, I quit, I, 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 I quit uh, talking terrible about that person, but I still don't, you know, I still do, a, you know, a little bit. Well, hey, hey, you see that piece? Just this you know, it's people looking for something big that shut it down. Well, why am my faith working? Yeah. Yeah. And they're looking for something mucho grande. Yeah. <laughs> when it's El Biquito. <laughs> you know? Here, you can have that. But the Lord showed me that and said, that's like most people. They're looking for something big like you was doing when it's just not even worth, when, when it's a small correction. And boy, if Morgan took off on that truck or something and just going downhill, she wouldn't have known what to do. Slam on the brake hard she could, and then no ABS, the thing just skid out and end up in the bar ditch, you know? So that's why I said I'm the best driver I know. I know what I'm doing. I went down there. I was telling that lady that story uh, about that. And she goes, one time my, my vehicle just took off in Florida, and I wasn't even pushing the gas. <laughs> and she said, I ran it in bar ditch, and I flipped it. And I said, well, why don't you just put a neutral turn key off? I ain't thinking about that. I'll tell you them ladies drivers, I'll tell you what. She flipped that car, I started laughing. Boy, she smoked like a stack, you know. She's like, ha, ha, ha. Got that raspy voice. Hey, man. You know, let's go over to um, Mark 1123. This is where most people miss it when it comes to faith. And they, they're looking for something big. They're looking for something, where am I missing it? But they don't want to look at the small stuff. They don't want to look, they don't want to correct the small things. They're looking here, looking there. I was out here on the side of the, the, the church. And uh, I look over and we have a, a sewage thing down in the ground. And that's where all the sewage goes, and it has a pump, and it pumps it out to the street. It's about 20 feet down. And I look over at that thing, and there's water coming out the top of that thing. What's 20 feet down? There's big pumps down there, big pumps. And it pumps out the sewage all the way to the street. And I'm looking over there, and boy, that sewage is coming out the top of the end of the parking lot. I go, oh, God. And I'm looking, and I said, oh, my gosh. If the city sees it, they're, they're going to put the hazmat on this whole church. So I told him, I said, get a garden hose out there and act like you're watering it down so they don't know what the difference is. And uh, so I went over there, and we just paid for new pumps. You know, pumps, $10,000. $10,000 for them sewage pumps. 
He said, you put a shirt in there and it'll eat just tore it to bits. I said, well, I don't want to put a shirt in it, but thank you for telling me. <laughs> you know, but um, I said, man, we just made this and, and we just did digging. And I thought, oh, my God, they hit the line somewhere because it, it may take a day to fill up. I mean, it's a big shaft. And uh, I was like, oh, man, we done did it now. We're in trouble. And uh, I said, well, just call the pump, the pump guy. I said, nothing I can do about it now. Just call the pump guy, and he come out, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's just a fuse this big. It's just that big. And I said, look at that, all the sewage, all this crap backing up in the street. And that's like pe people's lives, all the crap backing up in their lives. This smell stank, look bad. And here it is, something small, and no one wants to crack, walking in love. They don't want to quit gossiping. You know, like I tell, uh, women say uh, more words than men. So you got to watch it more. <laughs> you don't get yourself in trouble. You have to watch it. I made up my mind. I took someone else's opinion about something that I didn't even know about. I just took what they kind of said and kind of just, and they said it a lot. And I, uh, I just made up my, my mind, I guess, that I was with whatever they were saying. Not think twice. I said, well, maybe it's that way. And you know what? Uh, that person helped us out tremendously. And I told Morgan, I will never have an opinion about someone else in my life. I went, never. I ain't going to have an opinion about someone else. Well, they did such and such wrong. It don't matter. God didn't make you the grim reaper. God didn't make you the judgment. You ain't the judge at the door, like the Bible says. You ain't that person. Boy, I tell you what, I try to stay away from people like that. Yeah. I don't want to have no opinion about nothing. Hey, that's, what, 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 what do you think, Brother Hey, I ain't got no opinion. That's between them and God. That's between them and God. I don't care, well, this, this pastor or such, such got caught sleeping with such, such. Hey, that ain't my deal. Yeah. That's between them and God. They, they, they knew better. I don't want anywhere near it. That's between them and God. Well, what do you think? I ain't got no opinion about it. Yeah. Most people put their two cents in. But the Bible said you're going to have the same judgment come on you. Boy, I'm going to stay far away from that, John. Amen? Amen. We're talking about love this morning. The Bible says to love your neighbor. You know what the dictionary says about neighbor? It's someone close to you. Like right now, we'd be neighbors. Even though we don't live in the same casa next to each other. But we're close. We're neighbors. You know, that applies to road rage. They're pretty close to you, ain't they? What about the stoplight? Okay, you're my neighbor's stoplight. I won't lose my victory. The Bible says, have one, love one for another that you know that you're my disciples. That you're actually a Christian. That you ain't, you know, I've seen some people about fighting in the parking lot. It's like, what in the world are we Christians? I guess not today. All right, let's go fight. You know. Let's go over to Acts 6 a. Well, hold on, hold on a minute. Let's stay in uh, Mark 11. And uh, y'all know this scripture. 23. For verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He have whatever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever. Let's go down to verse 25. And, and uh, when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anybody. Huh. Okay. Some of y'all going to have to forgive. You say, well, you don't know what they did to me. It don't matter anymore. You're going to have to walk in love. If you want this to work, he's telling you, believe for all the things you want. Believe for your healing. Believe for your kids. But you're going to have to walk in love. Forgive. To make it work. Amen? Like I showed you that little piece. For that truck to work, I had to have that little piece. And people look for some mucho grande peace when it's really something stupid. When it's something simple. Amen? Amen. Let's go over to, um, the Lord showed me this other one, which I'm, I like very much. Let's go to uh, Acts 6, 8. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Stephen here. And it says, Stephen, full of faith. Full of faith. I looked up full. I said, well, what's full mean? It means coming over the top. It's full. You fill a bucket full, it's, 
You know when it makes the water bead at the top where it's just not about to fall over? But the water will come up a little bit over the edges, but it's like right there at the top. I call that full. Yeah. Ain't no more room. Right. He's full, and it says he's full of faith. Why was he full of faith? I preached this up in Merced. The Lord showed it to me there, and boy, I had a, had a good time. Let's go over to when they, uh, when, when they was going to kill Stephen. And it says here in verse, uh, let's see, 60. Now we see why he's full of faith. Here the people want to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. They are going to throw rocks at his face. And he said he, cr he cried out a loud voice, Lord, don't lay this sin to their charge. Yeah. 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 You talk about love. And you see why he has great faith. That's why the Lord told me that to have the God kind of faith, you're going to have to have the God kind of love. Amen. Not the human love. Human love shallow until you scratch my truck. Yeah. Then it's over. Yeah. We're going to fight now. You know, the Bible says pray for your enemy. But instead you curse him. Hey, same judgment going to come back on you. Let me ask you a question. Now this applies to me. Someone had told me, I, I, I love my truck. Someone told me, how can you love your truck when it don't love you back? It's a one-way street. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think that was very funny because they thought they was onto something. <laughs> it's a one-way street. <laughs> and uh, I love my truck. I take care of my truck. Boy, I shine them rims. Boy, I clean it out. Someone scratched my truck. Boy, I'm pretty ticked about it. I, your truck. I'm sorry. Your truck. I love your truck. But I drive it. I, your truck. But I love her truck. <laughs> and you know what? I put a lot of effort into her truck. Can I go back and say it's mine now or you want me to keep on saying? All right. Our truck. Our truck. <laughs> and uh I put a lot of time and effort, boy. It takes me a while to clean that big rig. And I put a lot of time and effort in. Someone come and start talking crap on my truck. Boy, you talk, you know, just come unglued. You ain't going to talk trash on my truck. Well, why is that? Because I care about it. I put a lot of time into it. I, I, I'm putting a lot of effort into that thing. What if you take that person and start praying for that person that cursed you? You put time and effort into them. Hey, don't talk about that person. I'm praying for them, Jack. Don't be talking crap on them. I'm praying for them. I had one fellow. One fellow, he, he, uh, I don't know. I feel bad for him, but, but he had an opinion about my dad. Well, my dad was already dead, and he still got an opinion about someone's dad. I'm like, you know, and he was telling us well, such, such, and, 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 boy, I was getting ticked off. I just had, boy, I had enough. I'm going to talk about my daddy. And I said, well, you know, and the Lord dealt with me. He said, why don't you pray for him? Okay. All right. You know, I don't want to. But every day with my saying list, I said, I pray for that brother. And the Lord said, next time you see him, give him some money. Hmm. Love does something, doesn't it? Well, well, well. You think I want to give him my money? I had to override that. I said, uh, okay. All right. I said, uh, next time I saw him, I said, brother, I just want you to know I love you. I'm praying for you. He goes, brother, I need it. I need someone praying for me. I said, yeah, you do. <laughs> I said, I want you to know that I love you, brother. You're important to me, and I'm praying for you. Whatever's important to you, you take care of it. Ain't that right? right. Boy, you've seen some people, uh, they don't, don't, don't care about none, none of their stuff. Hey, I care about my stuff. I care about you, brother. I'm praying for you. Yeah, right. Amen. It's, it's important that we pray for those people. You may not want to. You may, you know, there was one guy that's been horsing with us. And uh, Lord told me, you need to have compassion on him. And I did. And I, I said, you know what? I feel bad for this man. He does not know what he's doing. He is getting himself in a heap of problems. And sure enough, they did a deal, and boy, he's just in a mess. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have compassion on that man. Even though he's doing wrong and trying to make junk for us, yeah. I'm going to have compassion on him. Yeah. Amen. But you ain't going to, boy, some, some folks just a snake in the grass. Yeah. You know, hey, stay away from the snake in the grass. 
I love you, snake, but stay away. I don't want you in my house. Snakes belong outside, you know. Hey, you say, well, such and such is just constantly causing problems in my home. D then don't let them in. You can pray for them at a distance. And you know what? You couldn't do nothing right anyways with old pe if people. They'd still criticize you. If, if you gave them a million dollars, they'd complain about it. Well, they just give me that money because they don't mean to go away. These going to complain about something, boy. If you, if you got healed, they, they'd complain that, that they was healed. I didn't get my government check no more. You know? Well, that's my little mini sermon. El Biquito. I don't know if I helped y'all, but I helped myself. The Lord's been dealing with me for that for a year and a half. Obviously, it's for a reason. Brother and sister, if we're going to prosper and live on top of the barrel, we're going to have to love one another. We're going to have to forgive and move forward. Amen? If you have anything against anybody, anything. Boy, you got a pin in your shirt, that's anything, ain't it? That little pin on your day, that's anything. Hey, if you got anything on anybody or anything has something against you, forget about it. Let it go so we can move forward. It releases the flow. You understand? That's like that little piece. A little piece. I needed that piece for that thing to run just nice. And boy, I, I gunned the fire out of it in the snow and then laid off real quick. And I'll tell you, boy, she just out of per perfect. Hmm. Well, well, well. I help y'all today? Yeah. Praise God. Sister Morgan, come on up here. She's a preaching machine. She get in the youth, boy, or the, in the Bible school, boy, she just let them know. Uh, that, that message was for um, everyone that Regina cut off in our parking lot this week. <laughs> Pastor Jay, I, I heard she, she might have done that to you. She's forgiven. Okay, we can, we can get somewhere this morning after that. <laughs> uh, you know what, he, what he's saying, talking about the little things. Um, he, we always think it's something big. We always want, we're waiting for this big answer from heaven. What's going to get our breakthrough and bring our finances and bring, uh, release our, you know, the healing power of God. What can, what can be done? And we're missing the small leadings of the spirit. You know, you don't need a word from heaven to, to tell you what my husband just preached about. You don't need a, a special revelation, a special word, someone to call you out about your situation. Sometimes just what his message, what he was preaching about, the Holy Ghost has already been dealing with you. He's already been working. He's already been uh, uh, trying to make some adjustments, and you just, you're looking for something else. Uh, let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy. Just a couple of things that... Um, the Holy Ghost has had me to kind of look at over the last couple of days <clears throat> with Pastor Nancy's teaching and, um, and what Pastor Jay said yesterday, kind of tying some of it together. And uh, she's been preach preaching, ministering about, praying for... Uh, the ministers, praying for your pastor, praying for your man of God, uh, the responsibility that we all have uh, for praying for one another. And I happen to see um, in teaching, I teach out of this quite a bit in the Bible school, out of um, First and Second Timothy and Titus, uh, but I, I was drawn to, to chapter 3 and chapter 4 and some things that Paul said, just to kind of give more scripture in case you didn't believe her or weren't convinced of why we need to be praying for boldness, uh, believing for the utterances. Uh, there's some specific instruction that Paul gives here to Timothy uh, that shows we need to be praying what, it, what a minister's responsibility is and why we need to be praying for them, for boldness. And uh, look here at, at uh, chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4, uh, the Amplified says, I charge you, he's talking to Timothy, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, the, li uh, uh, 
to judge the living and the dead, and by in the light of his uh, in the light of his coming and his kingdom, herald and preach the word! Exclamation point! Yeah. 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 Herald and preach the word, yeah. not uh, get out and have the food drive. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say preach and collect backpacks. Uh, preach and have a bike drive for the kids. He just said, Harold, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready. Be at hand and ready, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable. So we want uh, ministers, when you pray for ministers, you want them to be ready to preach whether their, their opportunity is favorable or unfavorable. They need boldness in those, uh, in those situations. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Whether it is welcome or unwelcome. God's not waiting for you to preach uh, to help uh, correct people's lives and, and make uh, what my husband was preaching on. Uh, a lot of people don't like to hear that. They want to hear how lovely they are and how well they're doing, you know, and how they're being a good person because, you know, they brought their, uh, their, their donation for the canned food drive and that was their act of love, but they don't want to hear how they're not treating others right or, or treating their spouse right or uh, uh, treating those, you know, they, they, they think that, that because they're good to those uh, uh, that have a need, you know, or, or less in their status in society, but they think they can talk to the body of Christ any way they want. Those in the church, they have no regard. And so this is saying whether welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. <laughs> I need my pastor to show me in what way my life is wrong. This is Paul. And Pastor Nancy, she talked about it. She said this man uh, was, was the vessel that God used to pen uh, the, the Pauline revelation. He received that uh, of who we are in Christ, penned the New Testament, half the New Testament. And this man is saying here to tell people how their lives are wrong. That is a preacher's responsibility, to tell people how their lives are wrong. Where they're missing it. And convince them, rebuking, correcting, warning, urging, and encouraging them. Now go over real quick. Go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Just so nobody can say that Paul was being a bully or this is too harsh. Let's look at what he says. Let's look at Ephesians. Look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4:15 4, says, "But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all things which is the head even Christ." So now he's talking about speaking the truth in love. That's what he, he's it's the same man. It's the same man. So he's encouraging, uh, he, he's telling them, you've, you've got to deliver the truth in love. So he's not saying you get up and you beat the people over the head and you be a bully. You're delivering the message, uh, urging them, warning them, correcting them in love. And then it says in 16, from whom, it says, which is the head... That uh, uh, in love may grow. The Amplified says, rather let, our, re, rather let our lives lovingly express the truth. In all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, uh, enfolded in love, let us grow up in every way, and in all, thing, and in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ. Uh, for because of him, the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments which it is supplied when each part, 
with power adapted to its need is working properly in all its function, grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. Uh, I love the King James. It just says, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto edifying itself in love. When you admonish, when you warn, when you correct, when you get up, uh, and take your place as a minister, as a pastor, and as the congregation is asking for those utterances of warning, it's going to grow us up in love. It's going to grow us up. We are the body. You know, there's a, a, something so simple. I was thinking the other day, Liam and I, we were reading one of his little story Bibles, and there was a picture of Jesus, and there was a crowd around. And he said, look, Mama, that's like, that's like Nanny when she preaches. He, he saw the people, Jesus preaching to the people. And he related, and, he, and then he said, and Mama and Daddy and Gaga? And I said, yes, honey. I said, do you know why uh, uh, we, we get up and we preach? Because Jesus isn't here to preach anymore. Jesus isn't on this earth, honey. He, he's in heaven, but he also lives in your heart. He had gotten born again. And I said, honey, he lives in your heart. But I said, that's why we have to preach, because Jesus isn't here anymore. We've got to do it for him. That's why we're in the ministry. How simple is that? What did Jesus do? He went around in love, went around in love, and he wasn't always uh, smiles and sunshine. He made corrections where there need to be corrections. Amen? To the disciples he corrected. Those in the temple he corrected. And so to think that kind of with this modern day church that you come in and, and all the people all are going to receive and need is just an uplifting message. Listen, uh, correction can be uplifting. It can be when it's done in love. And so to pray for boldness that she come in and, and, and your, your man of God, your pastor come in and be urgent with what God, I want her, if there's something that needs to be done that's going to trip me up, I need her to be urgent. I need her, I need her uh, 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 to be, um, well, go, let's go back. Let's go back. There's a word I want us to look at here. It says here, warning, urging, and encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. I looked up that word, uh, unflagging. It, uh, one of the synonyms is single-minded. I don't want my, my, my pastor, I don't want, you don't want preachers to come in and the Holy Spirit puts something on their heart and they get double-minded about it. Single-minded, come in, deliver what the Holy Spirit gave them. Double-minded, they come in, they start going, should I say that, shouldn't I say that? What is it going to do to the offering? Are they going to get offended? Are they going to leave? Single-minded, they come in with one purpose to deliver what the Holy Spirit gave them. No other agenda. You know, there's so many other agendas that, that, that ministers can have, uh, numbers. Uh, well, well, this hurt the young people. Will this affect, you know, how will the old people, older people receive this? How will the younger people receive this? What about our single moms? Are we, you know, uh, will this offend somebody who may be dealing with homosexuality or if somebody's sleeping around? What if they've been on drugs? Is this going to, uh, uh, you know, will, will this push them away to tell them? that their lifestyle is hurting them, <laughs> or to deal head on. No, I want a single-minded. We need to be single-minded when we deliver the word, not double-minded, double motives, yeah. trying to fill the seat, but you, you, you want to help them, you love them, but you'd rather keep the, their seat warm. <laughs> you know? Um, I, I, would, I would prefer, because what Paul said, it's love. We've got to come to maturity. That's kind of what this whole week uh, has been about, coming to maturity, being ready. Jesus uh, was uh, mature. When he, when he went into the ministry, when he began to move and all those miracles happened, he was at maturity. We see a mature man walking by the Holy Ghost, doing signs, wonders, and miracles because there was maturity. 
We've got to have the maturity to be able to house these signs, wonders, and miracles. And the only way you get there is if my pastor warns and urges. You know, we call it being Johnny on the spot. If something's, if something's amiss, I need the Holy Ghost through my pastor to be Johnny on the spot to fix that before I go months and months and months. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to hear, um, uh, did you bring, you know, preacher gets up, and I thought of this this morning. Uh, so many people, you know, we, we come in and say, did you bring your shouting clothes? And, you know, I, I would rather hear sometimes, you know, when you're, you're dealing with things, did you bring your big girl and big boy panties on today? <laughs> but people just want the shouting clothes. But sometimes it's, it's uh, the occasion calls for big girl and big boy pants. You know, and if you can learn to shout... When she gets up like she was talking about last night, you know, don't get the, your little baby panties in a wad, you know, because you can't, you, you're not ready to grow to maturity yet, <laughs> you know. You know, uh, she made this statement last night. She said, um, People say, well, they, you know, they just don't feed me anymore. This person just doesn't feed me. You know, and after all these years of pastoring, she knows what that means. <laughs> Most pastors say, you know what that means. They're offended. They're out of here. Puts it off on the preacher, not on them. You know, and what, what they're be dealing with. They don't want to hear it anymore. And uh, so someone says they, they doesn't. They don't feed me what they're saying is, um, I, I'm not willing to receive the love that they're showing me. I don't want to receive the love that they're giving me. I don't ever want to get in that position where I'm not uh, ready to receive the love that the Holy Ghost is trying to show to me through my pastor. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Look up, go up to, to chapter 3. Go up just a couple of, of verses. It says here, there was one statement that stood out. And it says, uh, look at verse 14, 3.14. It says, but continue thou in the things, he's, he's talking here to Timothy, but continue uh, thou, he, well, backing up, he talks about the way um, people were going to start behaving as time went on. You know, men's behavior and the way uh, the world's going to start looking and how, um, then he begins to talk about how he, he says in verse 11, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, that persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Uh, you know, I would say when I was reading this, you know, God showed me that the persecutions Paul suffered back then, a little bit different probably than what we have now, but same spirit. It's the same thing. And I, I think what happens is ministers, they hear somebody like Pastor Anderson was talking about the men, the people who left his church. You remember on Tuesday he was talking about the families. There was only two reasons why they left. They didn't want the move of the Spirit, and they didn't like him talking about uh, not drinking. That would be, to me, a form of persecution. And see, a lot of ministers have given into that. They've given into those persecutions. And so they've caved in because they don't want those persecutions. They don't want to be the church in town that has a standard. <laughs> they don't want to be the church in town that has lesser numbers because they're willing to preach and warn and urge and admonish and, and correct. So they're not, they're not, uh, they're, they're, like I said, they're looking for relief from the persecutions instead of looking, Paul said, uh, but out of them, all the Lord delivered me. That's what happened with Pastor Anderson. He, he said this last year, the numbers weren't, uh, weren't the same, weren't quite up, but their, in, their income had increased 40%. I'd say that's deliverance. Yes. He wasn't looking for acceptance. He was looking for deliverance. Yes. 
Paul wasn't looking to be accepted. He wasn't looking to change so he could, well, let me, if I just stop preaching this one thing or if I just lighten up in my message, they'll stop persecuting me and then maybe I can reach more people. What does that sound like? Well, if I just, you know, if I can just kind of lighten up, you know, with what, uh, we'll just ease up, we'll preach faith, but we'll leave out a little bit of the Holy Ghost and, and the move because that may, uh, some people may think that's a little weird. So we'll just, we'll just hold back from that so people don't talk about us. Then we can reach more people. You're just giving in to the persecution. You're giving in to what people are saying. Instead of looking, we'll go full force. We'll go full force. We want everything that the Spirit has. We want everything. We're not willing to compromise because others uh, think that we're, you know, we're too radical. You know, Jesus was radical in his day. Nobody else was doing what he was doing. Why? But he, but see, the modernistic church, they won't argue with you that Jesus loved. They preach Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus loved. They want to talk about how much he loved, how much he, but see, we, I just point out, he corrected. He gave instruction. He, he wasn't willing to let things just slide. You know, I want my pastor to represent Jesus just how Jesus represented the Father. And that means, you know, handling and fixing and correcting, bringing me to maturity, and not giving in to what other people say just so we can have, have more numbers. And that's why we praying for boldness, what she said, praying for utterance. The love comes through the love comes through utterances. Love comes through divine utterances. Love is is uh, poured out on people through divine utterances. Uh, and then this, this, let's look at verse 14. I, I love this statement. I've been meditating on this. It says, but continue thou in the things, uh, 3.14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The Amplified says, knowing from who you learned them. Knowing, he, he tells Timothy, don't continue to, to hold to the things you have learned and of which you are convinced, knowing from who you have learned them. We've been talking about the Smith Wigglesworths, the Dr. Sumrall's, Brother Hagen. All we're doing is what Paul says, continuing to hold who we have learned from. Timothy received the same instruction. So when people say, well, we're in, a, we're in a new era, things are going a different direction. Well, apparently for Paul, he was telling Timothy, remember who you learned what you learned. Yeah. Remember, don't forget. Yeah. You were convinced. You knew. You knew the truth. We could say this. We've experienced the power of God. We were in those Holy Ghost meetings. Uh, we, we've heard there's people still around that if we're in the healing revival that'll talk about it, that we're in the charismatic movement. Uh, we, we've got books on Azusa Street, um, all, Sister Amy, all these great uh, moves of God that came before. There are people still around and material still around to talk about these. Remember, continue. <laughs> Uh, knowing from who you've learned them. Stay with who you've learned them. You could say it that way. We're approaching 30 years old this year. My husband is running to it. I am approaching it more reverently. <laughs> you put it that way. <laughs> uh, he loves getting older. He loves it. Um, but I would say this, for even for, for, the, for us and the age that we're at, it's so safe to be able to go, we know who we learned it from. We, they already gave us. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to come up with some new. We don't need a new program to get more people in the church. We don't need any uh, uh, new methodology. We don't need um, what's the latest. I, we don't ha even have to keep up with uh, the latest. What's the latest graphic design and the latest trend and what T-shirts are people doing and what's the cool sayings now? We're young and we're free from all that. <laughs> We know all we're called to do 
is to preach in love, help people come to maturity. We're not, uh, we're, we're convinced, he says here, uh, and continue to hold to the things you have learned and of which you are convinced. We're convinced what the right way to go is. We're too convinced of the move of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the Word, the divine utterances. We've seen them affect our own life. We've, we, we know how divine utterance uh, has changed our marriage, has changed our children, has affected us growing up to coming to maturity in some things. And we're, we're convinced. And so it's, it's almost, like I said, it's freeing to know that we don't have to go with the latest trend. The Word has released us <laughs> from trying to keep up, with, keep up with the times. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, we, we're current. We, we're not looking to stay in the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s. You know, you, you stay current. You stay uh, uh, up with, you know, you can stay up with some trends. <laughs> I can put it that way. Uh, you know, our hair is not real big. <laughs> but, um, but I would say, dare say that for me, for my husband, I know for our youth, the ones we talk to, the Bible school students, we have, we're endeavoring to encourage and teach them, hold fast to those who've taught you. Stay close to those who've taught you. Stay close to those who've taught those who've taught you. You know, stay, get a hold of Brother Hagen's materials. Because Brother Hagen is the one who taught the one who taught you. And who taught Brother Hagen? Get a hold of, uh, of the materials and, and learn the stories of the men and the women who taught Brother Hagen. And who Brother Hagen, they taught our pastor, who taught us. That's what he's saying, uh, knowing from who you learned. If you're to go forward in the things of God and we're th this era and the things that God has, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, you've got to stay with who God has spoken to regarding this era. And make sure you're convinced. Convinced in your own heart. Amen? Amen. Uh, do you have anything else? I think we were going to, um, if it's okay with you, lay hands on the minister's kids that were here this morning. So uh, if you are minister's uh, kid, son, daughter... We ask if you come up. My husband's going to uh, minister to you. Congregation, if you'll just go ahead and stand. And something that we had, for those of you that are up here, you know, this is a year of greater. And so my husband and I, we had on our heart that this is just uh, going to be an impartation to assist, to help uh, with the greater for your, for your parents, for the ministry that you're called to serve, uh, that we all move forward in the greater together. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Bring one up. Bring them on up. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Come here. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Mama. Come here. Blessed in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you, how many of you say, I received something this morning? Wasn't that fresh? <laughs> wonderful hallelujah you can be seated if you would this morning you know when when you hear Stephen the, the thing you you can't hear help but hear Ed when you hear Stephen because of the frankness the sincerity the no religious and what you see is what you get and what you hear is what you're going to get and he uh you know, when, when people say, uh, when he makes statements, you know, about women or whatever, you know, I know I'm the better driver and all this kind of stuff. Don't, don't get offended, ladies. He works under me. <laughs> so don't, don't think there's anything to be defensive about. None of, none of, the, none of it at all. He's just taking advantage of mic time. You know, <laughs> in our family, it's not much of male, female, anything like that, because, you know, that's how you pastor being a woman. You ignore it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just I always appreciate how fresh things are. Amen. Well, we're going to receive an offering this morning uh, for the expenses of the meeting. If you would just go ahead and. Uh, there should have been an offering envelope on your seat there, but if you need another one, the ushers have those available. Raise your hand if you would. Let, it, let them know that you need that. Making out any checks to DM, Dufresne Ministries. And uh, while you're doing that, just to let you know of a few items back at the book table. If you have not already, get the copy of the CDs, DVDs of these meetings, the Holy Ghost meetings. Then, oh my, 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 if you don't have this, you need to get it by Brother Joel. What happened to honor? I would recommend pastors turn these books into your book of the month. Uh, then also his one out there called Assembled Together on the local church. Real uh, wonderful, wonderful material for, uh, for this era. And then we have this series, the Dufresne Family Faith Series. Mama. Yeah, Mama's on there. And... Uh, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> yeah. Who else? Who's that? Hmm? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. And so <laughs> there's one CD in here by Ed, one by me, one by Stephen, and one by Morgan, the Dufresne Family Faith Series. So that's out there. Hallelujah. You ready to give this morning? Hold your offering up before the Lord. Father, we thank you for all that we've heard, all that we've received. We purpose to not just be hearers, but, but to be doers of this word. Father, we're so grateful for all the impartations this week, for all the revelations, for all the dealings of the Spirit. And we honor the word. We honor the Holy Spirit by being obedient. And we give you all the thanks and all the praise. And everybody said, Amen. Ushers, go ahead, pass the offering bucket. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. As that offering bucket goes your way, say this after me. Say all the money this ministry needs, it'll come. All the money that my local church needs, it'll come. All the money that I need, it'll come. All the money that my business needs, it will come. For this is a year of the greater, and I'm in a greater flow. And I'm living off the top of the barrel. Everybody said, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, I'm going to keep moving in faith and love. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.